Hello, children. We're going to be doing this. I don't know. I can't tell if it's the bandwidth or my new camera, but unfortunately, Noah Costa is going to have his request <clears throat> experimented with our hardware. And Noah writes, hey, Cap hey Cappy, Noah again. I once made wanted to major in economics prior to getting my ass handed to you early on in my college career before switching to computer information systems. I'm glad I saved another life. How many lives have you saved? Miss Teacher Lady? Oh, none. None, because you gave me just the same old lies you were told. <clears throat> um, I love economics and had a good question that you have never talked about in any of your videos. My question is, how does stagflation work in an economy that doesn't have money printer go burr? Uh, it technically doesn't. Uh, it, you can have... There's a possibility to have stagflation. Stagflation, by the way, was where you both have high inflation and low unemployment, you're in a recession. It is possible to have stagflation without making money printer go burr, and that's where you have a crippling recession where the money supply stays the same, but GDP drops so much now. Of course, at the same time when that happens, consumer confidence drops, and uh, the velocity of money goes down, so people don't spend as much. So that would effectively lower the uh, um, money supply or the effective money supply. So you may not have inflation, but it is possible if a society has been so, let's just say, numbed from past economic crises and pain that they just keep on spending like the good times are rolling uh, forever and they go into debt spending. So if the velocity of money keeps up, even with a stagnant money supply or stable money supply, <clears throat> if GDP goes down enough, that's less goods being produced with the same amount of money before. So you'd have a contracting GDP, you have higher unemployment, and you would have inflation. Again, if people were, well, like they are today. Well, this has been the, you know, well, money printer went burr to pay for the uh, stimulus checks. But it is possible without printing off money uh, to, to have stagflation. Uh, whereas we're going to talk about the 70s and even a little bit of the early 80s. Where we had the misery index, and everybody remembers Jimmy Carter, right, guys? So uh, going back to Noah's question, uh, how does stagflation work in an economy that doesn't have money printer go burr? For instance, the 1970s unemployment was 10%, interest rates were 10%, rose to 20% in 1980, and inflation was 12%. How was inflation occurring if no one was working and it was so hard to borrow, <clears throat> considering the unemployment of the nation? Thanks, Cappy. No, well, if you go back and you look at, oh, even starting – in the, in the first oil embargo in 1973, uh, they were making money printer go burr. And you, can, you could use this with the, the FRED database at the Federal Reserve. Plot, uh, well, would you want to do real or nominal? I suppose, I suppose you could do nominal uh, or, or real. Uh, plot real and nominal GDP growth against... Uh, the money supply, the percent increase in the money supply. And you'll see that for most of the 70s, we were printing, money printer was going burr at a rate faster than GDP. And so when you have, and that's that's why we had stagflation, which is, which is it's just the, it's, it's such basic bitch economics. Like if you don't understand um, that uh, printing off more money than GDP grows you don't understand why that causes inflation. Just, just don't vote, okay? And for God's sake, don't become a politician and don't become an economist. We are the world's greatest con economists on this. <laughs> Let's get rid of that there gold standard. No, just money printer go burr. <clears throat> I believe that was 1971. Um, and yeah, and then and then they're shocked that there's inflation. Now there were other psychological things going on and. Uh, because they had made money printer go burr so much or for long enough, for two, three years, people started to bake it into their salary negotiations. So <clears throat> union leaders would say, oh, well, we're expecting a 7% increase in our pay. Well, that drove up the cost of, of goods because your labor costs just went up 8%. Why? Because, well, it went up by that percent beforehand. <clears throat> and it wasn't until Paul Volcker came in and, and, purposely set the economy into recession uh, to knock it off with the inflation. He basically spanked all the all the money printer go burr economists. Said, no, no, we're not doing that anymore. And there was, and I remember because I was, a, the 70s were all shit, by the way. If you were, were the 70s good? No, nothing good came of the 70s. Nothing. Not even me. 
But I remember 80, 81, and 82 just being bad. But then I remember 83. And 83 was a good year because I think we got Atari that year. Uh, and then then uh, Ronald Reagan, then the glory days of the 80s. The last time America was really great. That's what happened. Um, <clears throat> so how was inflation occurring if no one was working? Uh, and it was hard to borrow considering the unemployment of the nation. Well, keep in mind, it, it's a formula. If GDP goes down, it was going down. And we kept the money supply stable, assuming, but you were right, they didn't borrow money. There was the, the, I'm sure the velocity went down back in those days. But that is possible. So a great way to understand economics, and in this particular case, stay inflation, but just some good to understand, money cannot make the economy grow faster. It can't, not over the long haul. The best you can do with the money supply is harm the economy uh, <clears throat> by causing price shocks, essentially. Uh, so ideally, in the ideal world, GDP grows by 5%. We want to keep price stability, so we're going to have the money supply increase by 5%. Just as if uh, if the economy went into contraction and we slowed down by 2%, Federal Reserve coming in there through federal open market operations, or reserve requirement ratio, have whatever lever they want to use, they should contract money supply by 2%. And the reason why is that then you have price stability, and you know that a gallon of gas, well, that that was another reason for the stagflation is we were importing inflation due to the oil embargo we imported a lot of our... <clears throat> oil from the uh, from the Mid East, and that, well, that also caused the recession as well. But removing external factors, uh, you want the price stability so that you know that prices are going to remain stable. Businesses can plan, they can budget. Uh, you can have labor contracts, things like that. You know, okay, my my future costs are going to be this fixed amount or about there. Uh, but once you print off more money, now you now now you have to deal with it. Now you have to dick around with it. And in the extreme case, if it was the Weimar Republic where it was hyperinflation, you're shutting down factories so people would take an hour off to take the worthless barrelfuls of money to transact it into a piece of wood because the wood had more intrinsic value. Uh, that is where prices start to actually have an effect on the economy by slowing down because now extra labor has to be spent dicking around, adjusting for inflation. You're distorting prices. That, that results in miss or mal investment. And it's just, it's it's not that hard. Economists are not that smart. It's not that glorious of a study. GDP goes up by 5%, increase the money supply by 5%. GDP contracts by 2%, contract it by 2%. But then people won't have the money. I don't care. I don't care. Because the economy is going to grow whether you want to, or it's going to do what it's going to do. And the government, as a public service, should just provide a stable currency and should get the F out of the way. You guys invest a ton of money in worthless housing projects? I guess half the banking sector is going under then. Bye. But we don't do that now. And so now, among fiscal policy where we're going to spend money here or do that there or make these regulations or rescind these regulations and tax rates and all that, or in the case of monetary policy, how much money we're now intervening and we're, you know, well, you'd see the raccoon that was wounded. Mom, there's a wounded raccoon outside. And you'd want to bring it in and nurse it. Oh, no, no, no God, no. They will he'll figure it out. It will let it be. And the, the economy is kind of the same way. You just, just let it be. Not Sometimes bad things happen. <gasps> really? You know, sometimes people make stupid mistakes, like lending to people with credit scores under 400. Banking industry. Uh, sometimes people pay billions of dollars for dot coms that don't make money. Uh, but that's not, that, that's not the concern of the federal government. It's not the concern of the taxpayer. I guess those people go belly up and, and life sucks for them for a decade or so, huh? No, no. Money printer go burr, bail out all the worthless millennials with their liberal arts degrees. All right. You know, because nobody needs suffer or learn a lesson. So there you go. Uh, guys, in the chat room, tell me how my audio and video is, if my video is lagging or what, because I'm not running my new camera. I'm running the crap camera, so I need to. Uh, DJ Aftershock, I have a new business ID, Mr. C. Modern art. There you go. Do you have rich parents over in uh, Kenwood in Minneapolis so they can buy their buy your way into the, uh, what's that worthless art museum? The Walker Art Center? Huh? 
Mexi Mike, five bucks. Cappy, your thumb clip will display going live time, but I've noticed it's two hours off. You broadcast it. Yeah, I'm I'm in I'm in the Southern Command, and there have been variables and factors where I'm going to murder everyone in a 10-mile radius. Uh, least of all my technological issues. So yes, my computer is showing me Central Time. I'm on Western Time. I just just tune in when you can. Um, Chris is black for two bucks. I'm twenty with six k in a Roth IRA. Will commies take it? Uh probably not. Not that low amount. I I, I forecast someday in the future. The commies will come in and say, if you have X amount per person or more, we're going to take the excess. I have a feeling they'll do that. Ill dues for two bucks. Would you count guns plus ammo in a net worth calculation? Not really, but uh, it. I mean, if you got a collection of guns, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a net worth. I mean, I guess they have value, sure. Uh, but I would. Um, it's not liquid. That's your insurance policy. You're not going to give those up. Swalu Bulu, five bucks. One of my gen ed classes is communication, and it is mind-numbingly boring. No wonder people are dumb. Yeah, could you imagine majoring in that shit? Uh, people actually get doctorates in communications. All right, that's it. I'm going to check the video if you guys uh, – hang on. What, what you got? Loud and clear from London, Cappy. The lightning is pretty dim. Yeah, hang on. Let's try this. That might work. Video not great, but okay. Audio is loud and clear. Is it too loud? We'll keep on practicing. All right, thanks for the feedback, guys. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.